here it came. The episode I dreaded since the beginning of this, <laughs> this let's play. <laughs> oh, Lord. Krakash is here sorting some alchemy in ingredients uh, for Julienne as part of her uh, new duties as a university staff member. Well, uh, how have these three years been? Uh, uneventful, stable, lots of menial tasks, um, menial work. As a matter of fact, uh, Grakash has taken, uh, as you can imagine, the previous students, uh, I don't know how to define it, admin work position. She now shares a room with Druya, who already fulfilled uh, that role years before. So it's the two of them doing admin work, checking that things are in order, uh, sorting uh, uh, the mail uh, that comes to the university, uh, organizing shipments of goods for the guilds or clients, and sorting ingredients and things like those, um, keeping the um, rooms in order. In exchange, of course, they both receive a stipend and uh, credits. As you know, both Druya and uh, Grakash don't have a family that pays for their expenses, so this kind of work is vital for both of them, especially Grakash. Let's check our to-do list for today. So, because uh, uh, Druya and Grakash work together, uh, they split their duties, and uh, in the days uh, when Grakash is not working, Druja is working, and so on and so forth. So they keep studying in the days where the other one works. So for today, we have just sorted the ingredients for Julianne. Uh, we have checked the letters for uh, Irlav Charol this morning. He's expecting a very important letter from Morrowind, but nothing arrived for him at all. And then, oh, the nymph hair parcel needs to be set up for delivery to Anvil Mages Guild by the end of the month. Oh, yes, of course. I think we have already talked to um, Julian about that. Grakash will write uh, to Dru a, a note for Druya to actually send it, because it's not ready right now, but it will be soon. Um, things are well, as I was saying, but as I have hinted before, um, Grakash is not the ideal magic student uh, at all and she's been realizing that herself you see the more time passed the more she felt like a fish out of water in this academic environment a new ship she's learned many district. notions of Marie course Elena. it's a galleon i think no come on Yes. Okay. Heard any news from the other and she can perform, but, but she lacks the curiosity Bye. a magic Bye. student well needs met, to excel. Mate. Oh, Julian is there. Julian, hello, Evoker. Uh, please remember to uh, fill up the Nif Hair's parcel because it's needed in the Anvil Mages Guild. Uh, please remember because otherwise, hello, Druja is gonna strangle me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> they say syndicates of um, wizards have led a boycott of imperial goods. That parcel needs to be sent, doesn't it? The Ultima have powerful wizards. Uh, you see, Grakash doesn't really like discuss so discussing theoretical Bye. things. Come She's not that there. imaginative or curious. She doesn't like experimenting with alchemy and the conjuration either. Her grades are barely good enough. As a result, she's at the bottom of the graduate choice. She doesn't really have any close friends at the university. There has been Elise, of course, but Grakas started feeling more like she was a pet to her than an actual friend. And to be honest, sometimes Grakash, well, doesn't uh, understand a word of what Elise is saying uh, or talking about, especially when she tries to talk about uh, magic and her recent discoveries. Uh, she'd better do that with Myron, doesn't she? <laughs> Um. Uh, 
there has been a very uncomfortable truth Grakash has come to terms with in these years and that's that well it's not like she hadn't noticed well, this before right. but uh, it has come to a point in which uh, Grakash could choose a specialization uh, because she she's already studied for four years she could find a job right now in any of the guilds uh, in Cyrodiil and outside Cyrodiil but she could do well, another three years of either battle magic and chanting, conjuration or elementalism. She um, could go for battle magic because that would be the most sensible choice uh, because she's really good in the subjects that are requested for battle magic. But, well... In all this time, Grakash has realized she barely agrees well, with the ethics and really. purpose of this the university and the mages guild. She has slowly become disappointed in this institution, and especially with their secretiveness and underhandedness sometimes, selfishness and uh, not being meritocratic enough, in Grakash's opinion. Favors for friends and such and such. Grakash has noticed that uh, the mages keep to themselves and they keep their research to themselves, it's not available for the community and while Grakash does agree that some things are very dangerous for commoners to know, the ultimate service of an institution should be for the people and the community. Um, the mages keep things for themselves, uh, for the better and for worse. <laughs> And even for the greater good, the greater good that they think of, the greater good in their opinion, of course. They hoard a lot of secrets, a lot of research that could be useful to all the people in Cyrodiil and in the Empire, even in other places like Morrowind and High Rock. And well, Grakash just... she doesn't understand them. She doesn't understand Hello, the fact that they are secluded people. They think of themselves almost as different from the commoners. And Grakash doesn't think so. Let's go check the post and see if there's something that we can redistribute Pardon around. Me, noble scholar, but could I speak um, in the apprentices quarters and uh, hello in general uh, in the hello, residential Master. quarters I admit to sharing the common enthusiasm for the arena boycott of imperial <laughs> goods in the land of the altar the ultima have powerful wizards it could be a dangerous <laughs> situation oh Good day. that's for me <laughs> A letter for well me. Met, guildmate. Good to see you. <sighs> All right. Greetings, guildmate. Such a mess. <laughs> Rakas is gonna read Greetings, that letter guildmate. immediately. She needs news. She needs to hear from people that she has actual relationships with. Hello, Mani Kartika. <laughs> Did you see her smile was so wide? So Grakash is staying here um, in a private room with Druya now. That's where Druya sleeps. She sleeps here because they are both now sort of part of the staff of the university. So they don't sleep in the dormitories with everybody else. Oh my god. Grakash Evoker, Arcane University, Imperial City. Hey Gra! Oh, this must be Agnete. How is it going at the university? Haven't heard from you in a while. Here in Skingrad, everything is the same. Boring. I can imagine the excitement of having to choose your specialization. Yeah, Grakash told Agnete about the specialization, but... I think you should go for battle magic. The only thing you need is a little combat training. I mean, you're an orc. 
Oh, seriously. Why does everybody think that because I'm an orc, I have to go around and hit people? <laughs> the college is gonna give you that. Well, yes, it would give Grakash that. When is your next holiday? Tamika got a new vintage. I absolutely want to try with you. Oh, yeah, I wish I could try that vintage now. Grakash is so depressed because she's thinking about, uh, you know, dropping out. <laughs> I have enclosed a letter from Grak. From Graklak? He really wanted to let you know something. Agnete. Dear Grakash, I know I've never written to you before, but you must know I always ask Agnete about you and how you're doing. Oh my god, it's so weird that Graklak is writing to Grakash. Because I've explained to you that they, they're not really in contact with each other. Um, she tells me you're doing well and are happy. You must recall... A conversation we had when we toured the outskins, outskirts of Skingrad. I told you I was never really interested in any employment and didn't need one, but, well, you inspired me. Oh, good God. Your determination and hard-working nature made me think about how lazy and without purpose my life is. Oh, well, I've told you that Graklak is um, well off as a young orc. He doesn't really need a job. And Grakash kind of always invited him because she always had to struggle a bit. She, she didn't really have to struggle. She never ended up begging or taking up jobs. She didn't really want to pick up. But, uh, you know, she never said anything to him or that he thought he was lazy. I've been loitering around Salmo's bakery for years, you remember, that's where we met the first time. Well, that's actually true, Grakash remembers. Because the truth is, I've always liked the idea of becoming a baker, and I thought, well, Grakash would have taken the chance already, why wouldn't I? This letter is making Grakash even more depressed, because everything she's believed in up until now is crumbling. <laughs> And here is, you know, Graklak uh, telling her that she inspired him with her determination. Where is Grakash's determination now that she wants to leave the Arcane University? She's about to cry. I started my own apprenticeship with Salmo one month ago and it's going very well. Of course it is. I like it very much and one day I'll be able to open my own bakery wherever I want. Thank you, Grakash, for being my constant inspiration, Graklak. Oh, <laughs> she's terrible. I mean, of course, Grakash is happy for Graklak, but she didn't know she made such an impression, and... <sighs> she doesn't want to do anything with her life anymore, because the truth is that when Grakash decided she wanted to be a mage, she was really young, and she liked the idea of it, but she's never really thought about... Well, if she was fit for it. I mean, she wanted to become Archmage. She managed to get here, but... She's no Archmage material. She's no Mage material. I mean, the people that surround her here, well, they've taught her that. Not only because she's not that skilled, but also because... She doesn't really believe in the guild as an institution anymore, and, you know, this letter comes. <sighs> what am I going to do? What are you going to do, Grakash? I don't think Grakash will go for her specialization. I think she will just leave. And, well, there is another thing we have to talk about. I told you how she would be eligible for any generic position without specialization. And th the truth is that the university did offer her a position. <sighs> she talked about it with Raminus and it seems to her that this position has been offered to her because she's an orc. And they never really have enough orcs as magicians, you know, around here in the university. 
so it would be good. Hello, Druya. Oh, I don't really want to talk with Druya right now. It would be good for for propaganda, for pro for propagandistic reasons. There is a reason why Grakash doesn't want to talk with Druja, really. But anyway, Grakash doesn't know if Elise did something to procure her disposition. The job interview with Raminus. But, yeah. Do you remember that matter you asked me to look into? I have some new information. In short, Hello? Hello, guildmate. Hello. These yes, yes. Hello. These are I battle mage students. They are specializing in battle magic. As well, Hello there. Or merely counteration. Hello. Let's have a snack. Grakash needs to calm down a little bit. <laughs> Sandwich. And, uh, well, I was saying, Grakash doesn't really like uh, the string of favors that people do in the Mages Guild. I mean, of course she's grateful to Elise. She doesn't even know if she was the one that made her talk with Raminus. She's pretty sure Raminus wants her here. And the position that has been offered to her would be as a... Um, well, um, keeper of books uh, at the Mystic Archives, working directly under Tarmina. And, uh, well, Grakash is not really... She knows it, she doesn't deserve that position. That position should be Druja's. Uh, when Tarmina learned that the position was offered to Grakash, she was cross. She doesn't think Grakash is ideal. She doesn't have anything against Grakash, but her favorite is Druya. Why? Because Druya is better than Grakash, and Druya is better for that job than Grakash. Druya, therefore, has been very cold with Grakash, because it would be really stupid for Grakash not to take that position now, wouldn't it? Greetings, guildmate. But I think Grakash has decided not to take it. Goodbye. Going back to study and going back to gardening. Grakash will be going back to redistribute the letters she has picked up uh, in the various departments. And, uh, well, I can tell you she will not stay at the university. Yes, she could. She could take the position and save a lot of money and live a cashy life for the rest of her days. But if there's one thing Grakash has is integrity sort of and she's not gonna be blind to the fact that she hasn't failed in this but she's not a good mage at all she's thinking about going back to coral and join the abbey there and for at least one year one year um think about her life and live as a lay sister and day by day by day, she's becoming convinced that that's the right idea. And so, for one year, Grakash led a contemplative life uh, right here in Choro, in the Abbey. Rashida does a good job keeping fire Goodbye. and steel stocked with good weapons. Farewell. What is it now? She led the life of a lay sister. So she enjoyed her time Hello. here and she spent Aren't very many sister? days with the Dharma, of course. But there wasn't really enough action here for Grakash. She couldn't actively help the poor. I mean, she did, of course, the Abbey does help the poor. But, um... So I've heard. There wasn't really enough um, relevance to be had in any work Grakash did here. Because, uh, yeah, Grakash does care about the poor, but she also cares about the role she plays in helping the poor. It's not hypocrisy, uh, I believe. It's just how she is. She would like to have a relevant, a position of relevance 
uh, for herself. She wants to be regarded as good, you know, a good person by the community. Hi there. While she was here in Coral, she has learned from Dharma that Tikius and Sidneus are probably going to marry, so Tikius is going to be Dharma's father. <laughs> Imagine Dharma. She's going to be rich because Tikius has, I mean, it's rumored that Tikius has a little bit of a small fortune saved, and Sidneus is fairly wealthy. So she's gonna be, Dharma is gonna be rich, beautiful, and she's so even tempered that, I mean, she's gonna find a husband in about what? Couple of minutes? Oh yes, because Grakash is worrying that she's not finding an husband at all, right? Because, as you know, as I have mentioned, this getting married and having kids was another one of the things she wanted to do in her life, of course. After this year spent very um, Welcome. well, so nonetheless, uh, in Coral, like Grakash will ask uh, to be recommended to join the Order of the Hours in the Imperial City. The Order of the Hours, if you don't know, is the order that uh, um, forms the Knights. Uh, or the guards that accompany the pilgrims during the pilgrimages on the various roads in Cyrodiil. And Grakash will be studying some basic combat uh, with um, the other knights that teach there. She will be staying in the dormitories of the Order of the Hours and then she will start her career as a, well, guardian of pilgrims and she will start serving uh, on the roads uh, for uh, modest and wages. Thanks for to talk. It is really no trouble. Bless my journey, Akatosh, for again I have to do my duty and accompany these pilgrims on a way to test their worship and their faith. I am, as always, your humble servant. And so here we go. We're ready. It's not the first time Grakash does this. A pleasure to see you. You too, Cornelius. Hello. Hello. Now we are going. And um, good to see you. It's just uh, probably what the fifth or sixth uh, route Grakash does. And um, we are going down to Layawin, and this time um, Grakash will stop by at well, her right. house, um, the White Stallion Lodge. And uh, I don't know if Mazog is going to be there, Hi but there. in any case, Grakash is going to be stopping there. She's going to lead these two people through um, a little bit of pilgrimage. Uh, on, uh, I don't remember if two or three shrines, and then they Good will um, rest down in Leiawin or in whatever inns there are in the middle Reading of the road. Sure. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's foggy. Hmm. Oh well. We're going anyway, of course, because such are the pilgrimages. It looks nice with the fog and everything, though. <laughs> it looks nice. It has a kind of a gothic atmosphere. Everybody's getting up and we are getting out of the Imperial City. Hail! Hail! <laughs> Grakash doesn't dislike this job at all. She feels like she's actually useful, as I've explained. Fighting is not uh, something she enjoys, but she's good enough at it. Hail, good citizen. Accidents. Happen, yes. 
um, but the pilgrims know, uh, my god, the fog, um, they know the risks they're taking. My god, look at this! I mean, okay, that's, it's new. Going around the game like this, it's new. We haven't seen much fog in this LP, so cool and everything, but... We have to go towards Pell's Gate. We will probably be stopping in Farigil. Because it's uh, a long way down to Lyowin. I can't see anything. I mean, you can see something, but it's genuinely foggy. It's still early in the morning, of course. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so we're gonna stop and buy some food at the inn. The proprietor knows Grakash. I mean, by now. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. By the nine divines, stay on the roads. Oh. Hello! What brings you here today? The usual, Nerusa. Welcome to the Warnet Inn. Could I interest you in a room or perhaps a bit of wine? We need food. So Have I've a heard. fine journey and Goodbye. keep yourself safe. Sure. Let's go. I mean... Hail, good citizen. How can I be of service? Oh, thank you, good guard. Hello. Hello. Um, you guys buy whatever you want. <sighs> Are we all ready? Good. Hmm. We need to go this way. It's gonna lag a bit because uh, of the fog, I bet. I'm gonna save. Expect crashes. <laughs> of course we are gonna try and follow the safer roads. Because our priority here is protecting the pilgrims. Uh, Grakash has traveled quite a lot and she knows. Um, oh, good God. The bear. Oh, no, not the bear. Oh, thank God the guard is there. Good. <gasps> oh, he's leaving. He's leaving. He's fleeing. Leave him alone. Just leave him alone. Oh, no. Now they're going after him. <laughs> if I stop. They are gonna come back. They should. Oh no. Yes. 